Hey everyone, it's Mark Skipper Mark, and this is our first major project of 2022. We've had a pretty cold winter, decent amount of snow, so we haven't been able to get outside and do much. He did put uh, wheel spacers on, about an inch and a half, to bring the wheels out a little bit, so that looks nice. Wasn't really worth recording. Um, if you want to see a wheel spacer video, check out this one that I've got up here of him putting back spacers on his uh, pickup truck. So the project that Matt's going to do um, now is he's putting on a three-quarter inch budget boost lift. And what it is is it's almost like a wheel spacer. It sits on top of the coil spring and it's just going to lift the Jeep up about three-quarters of an inch, give it um, a little tougher look that's not, um, you know, stock. He didn't want to go crazy with a big lift because he's already got the rock crawling Jeep that he uses when he really needs off-road clearance. This is more of just a fun around town vehicle. It's his daily driver actually. And um, so he didn't need to go crazy with it. If you have any questions or anything about the project, drop us a message in the comments. We'll try to answer and help out as best we can. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day. So to do this, the first thing you gotta do is disconnect the uh, shocks on both sides. Then you're gonna have to take the uh, ABS line out of the bracket, and then you're gonna have to disconnect the sway bar end links. Which is what? Uh, this right here. Oh, okay, and why, now why do you disconnect that? Just so you can drop the axle down enough to get the spacer above the coil spring. Oh, and then it sits up inside there? Yeah, and then it just sits up on top of it, and then you just raise it back up and put everything back together. Oh, okay, so that's why you have to drop the axle to make yeah, everything. so you can get it in, um, on top of the spring. Oh, okay, that makes sense. The axle still has to go down a couple more inches to get the coil out, but um, the brake lines are kind of getting tight and Matt doesn't want to overextend them and break them or anything. So he's taking this little bracket out that holds the brake line to the axle. The brake lines will still be connected, but it'll give it a lot of uh, extra play so he can drop it much more without making the uh, brake lines tight and break or anything. It really has a ton of play now in the line, so he'll be comfortable dropping it way down. The directions didn't say which spacer went in the front or the back, but the smaller one was the one for the front and the larger one went in the back. You doing it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, Get it back off? Yep. Just that little lift there from Nancy was all it took to get the spring in. On the passenger side, Matt had to take both the top and bottom bolts off of the sway bar, but he didn't on the driver's side. That's probably because the jack, um, you know, couldn't go low enough or the axle couldn't go low enough.
Matt's a big fan of torquing things to the proper specs. Front's done. It's three quarters of an inch taller. On the back, you have to disconnect the sway bar at the frame, not the, the end links. What else? Oh, and then you gotta do the shocks too. And then you should be able. Oh, and then there's a. Uh, bracket somewhere I think this one maybe, maybe not. I don't know but you gotta disconnect one of the brackets for the, the brake lines I don't know which one but it's Before just going and lowering the axles all the way down, Matt always checks around and makes sure there's nothing catching, nothing that's going to rip off, because better to catch it before it, there's a problem. The directions didn't mention it, but there's a wire going across the uh, differential that Matt said is pretty tight when he started to lower the axle down, so he just unbolted it and, well, pulled it out. It wasn't uh, bolted on. It was like a quick clip thing. There's another wire in here that he's also going to unclip. Just because it's pulling really tight. The passenger side spring came out really easily, but getting it back in was really a challenge. Even with Nancy lifting on one side of the axle and Matt sitting on it and putting all his weight on the other. He struggled for a, quite a while to get it back in. Are you lifting? Yeah. Interestingly, the driver's side spring went in really easily without any trouble at all. The trick was to use a pry bar under the base of the spring and just push it up into place. Okay, so the lift is done. Three quarters of an inch. No parts needed to be replaced. It's just a spacer that goes on top of the coil. The nice thing about this is it's really pretty quick, pretty easy, and it just, I think, gives it a little bit of a meaner look um, with the tires being a little wider from the spacers and the lift. I think it looks good. It still has the downward slope uh, of the factory, so nothing has changed in that regard. Uh, but it's it's done. It took exactly two hours. The instructions said it would take two to four. We always lean on the longer side because Matt takes his time and goes slow. He always looks up torque specs so he can torque everything. But what do you think? Let me know if you have any questions about how we did it. 
leave a message. We'll be happy to answer, figure out how we can help out. So thanks for watching and have a great day.